Hi, everyone. Looks like we're streaming live. So we had a couple of technical difficulties. Hopefully we'll get through this without losing each other and leaving the other one stranded. So welcome everyone. My name is Janice Amiro and I'm the founder of Janice Inspiring Change Holistic Nutrition. And I decided to um, do this project of Inspiring Change 2021 to bring some health practitioners to you to inspire you to support you in making some healthy changes in the new year. And, um, and so my guest today is Tracy Murdoch. Hi, Tracy. Hey, Janice. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, a couple of years ago, I moved to Bridgewater and um, I met Tracy because I was looking for someone to do yoga. And I was at a coffee shop and I overheard her talking about yoga. And that's how um, I, I came to be going to her classes just by conversation I had with her. So um, I started going to her classes in Bridgewater and Mahone Bay. She was doing it at both places at that time. So um, I thought I would ask Tracy to join me today to talk a little bit about yoga, Reiki and what she does. So I'll introduce you Tracy. Tracy Murdoch is a yoga teacher, a Reiki healer, pranasage practitioner, and I think you're going to have to explain that to people, and chanter on the south shore of Nova Scotia. She um, shares her love of yoga and helping people heal at her new space on the south shore, which she is in right now, and it's in Block House. Um, she has... Um, uh, colleague that she works with and uh, their classes are in Blockhouse. So thank you so much for joining me, Tracy. Thanks, Janice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, despite the weirdness in the world this last year, uh, we managed to open up a yoga studio in Blockhouse at the four-way stop. Uh, Alex, Alexandra Nettergaard and I are doing this together. We both had individual yoga, you know, our own kind of yoga following and we're just looking for a place to get grounded and not have to bounce around so much um, as I had realized came to realize I was teaching as you mentioned I was teaching in several different places plus doing my Reiki in a completely different place from that and it just kind of got to be too much so um, we were able to find a beautiful a place that we turned into a beautiful space here and uh, are happy to have this for people to come to you now. Yeah. Well, congratulations um, on, on the space. You gave me a little tour before we got started, a virtual tour, and it looks lovely and very welcoming. So if you're in the area, you'll have to check it out. So, so Tracy, is your, is your focus mostly on, um, uh, well, first of all, I want you to, to uh, define pranasage for people, okay. if you would. Uh, so if you're a person who's done yoga before, uh, anybody watching who's new, who's done yoga, you might have heard of the word prana. And if, you, if you're if you tuning in and you haven't done yoga, you might not be familiar with the word prana. But prana is the Sanskrit word for energy. And energy, you might think of uh, chi is another term, right? The energy that flows through our bodies that helps us move and makes us just helps us kind of feel good, right? So we're moving our hands and legs. We don't even generally think about it. But when we do yoga, we are moving our physical body and that's helping to kind of work through blockages and the prana, because it just gets the prana flowing better through the body. So if you were to come for prana sage, it's kind of like uh, getting the benefits of yoga without doing the yoga yourself. So you would come to, it's a one-on-one -on -one session with me where you would come and you would lay down, you would basically arrive in what you would wear for yoga. So comfy, stretchy clothes, and you would lay down on your back and I would move you in and out of yoga poses, kind of ground you down, just gentle, relaxing. And your whole intention is to just receive it, receive the gift of touch, the gift of movement and, um, and let, and your awareness basically of your body being moved is what helps to move the prana. So it's kind of a, it's very relaxing and uh, restorative kind of a treatment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. And for those people who don't know or think they might know what Reiki is, can you give us your definition? Sure, it's almost 
kind of like prana. It's it, Reiki is universal. Uh, is the Japanese word for universal life force energy. So it's the same kind of thing that chi is prana, but it's kind of coming. Um, it's it's basically a modality that you use the energy as the practitioner. You draw the energy through you to bring it into the other the person on your table. So again, so if you came in as a client, you would just wear whatever you're comfortable wearing. There's no movement when you receive a Reiki treatment, no physical movement. Um, but I am just kind of inviting the energy through me to come into the person and. It's kind of like, I always just tell people, it's honestly like, I'm just sending you love. Like I'm inviting in this, un you know, there's like this boundless life force energy all around us. And to me, it's love. And mm -hmm. I think about it as um, like when you, uh, you know, when you're feeling run down or when you say your car like stops working and it needs to get it, it needs a jump start to get going again. That's what that's kind of a simple way to explain Reiki. You're feeling low, things aren't working quite as well, or you know, whether, whether that's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, and something just feels like it's not quite right. And Reiki, the intention of Reiki energy is to help bring you back in balance in all those parts of your being. So uh, it's a pretty powerful modality. You don't, you can come in with an intention. Like if you were to come in for a treatment, and I can do it in person or I can do it distance actually as well. So you could be anywhere in the world to receive it. Uh, but whatever your intention is, like we can focus on that, but I also leave some space for the healing to go wherever it's needed for your highest good. So, you know, we, I don't need to know, and he, you may as a client not necessarily know where that is either. And it's okay. We can just, as long as we're open to it, we get the healing that we need in that moment, you know? So, so a person can, a person can uh, have a Reiki session for uh, a, a physical condition that they might be dealing with or an emotional one. Absolutely. Okay. And, they're usually, and they're honestly, they're usually tied together. Like I, a lot of, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's where you're going with that. But you know, it's like, if you, if something's going on, you know, in your, in your life, that's, really you're having a hard time with sometimes that that emotional stress can manifest in a physical way mm -hmm. right so so that's and i don't always know what's going on with a person when they come in they're just like oh i've got this pain here you know mm -hmm. and so we might try to get into that the physical part of it but this the cause of it is some is an emotional thing possibly mm -hmm. right so um, just putting the Reiki energy in to go where it needs to go. And, uh, and, and people always leave feeling much better than they came in. You know, it, it might not always be the thing that you think is going to feel better, but you feel better in some way, you know, maybe it might just even be that you just feel more able to handle the situation that you've been dealt, right. Just feel a little more kind of grounded and, and yeah. able to face it. Yeah. Do you, do you find, and this is something that is, is more, um, more people are aware of, but in your practice, do you find that, that people, uh, come to you not really knowing that there's an emotional attachment to a physical issue, or do you think that most people are aware that it's an emotional attachment to a physical issue? Because that can you can you give me your thoughts on that i would say most people don't make that connection mm -hmm. yeah i think that that's uh it, it seems it's like a little it's a little harder for people to make that connection off the top because it's like it's like you feel something in your physical body and you don't even and you're just like oh my gosh my knee hurts or my hip hurts right and as a yoga teacher i've learned we tend to actually store a lot of emotions in our hips and we can carry a lot of stress in our hips along with other parts of the body but that as an example so when somebody comes in with something specific and that's all they're focused on they're you know and then maybe over a two or three sessions it comes out that there's this other thing happening in their life that's really bothering them that wasn't as oh you know like i wasn't aware of at the beginning and then they start to make this connection like oh you know it's like why does my, why does my, why does my butt hurt? Oh, cause there's this pain in my ass that I haven't dealt with or whatever. Right. Like it's, it can be, it can be something as, yeah. as, as kind of weirdly obvious like that, but that isn't, you know? Yeah. 
So. so 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 this is something that's interesting. When when you said, you know, the first time a person might come in, they might leave with the pain being a little feeling better. Um, but if they come back a few times, they have somehow uh, they might have been um, for the awareness of maybe the emotional connection might have come through. Uh, do you have a, do, can you see that what that reason is for, for maybe why at first they didn't, didn't think that there was an emotional attachment, didn't even dawn on them. And all of a sudden they, um, they kind of make the connection. Do you think that the Reiki itself allows that to happen? Um, I think that there's a little bit of a, I think there tends to be a disconnect with you know, what we can see and what we can't see, right? So I think Reiki in general is a hard thing for people to wrap their minds around. Like, what do you mean energy work? Like, what is that anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel like it's a stretch then one, if there's actually somebody who's open to trying it and they walk through my door and they're just like, you know, this has been really bothering me. I don't know what else to do. I've tried all these other things and I'm desperate. So I'm trying Reiki, you know, like I get that. I <laughs> get that. And so, but then, yeah, I think there is, I think the Reiki definitely helps the idea that what comes in, like in a session, it can be quite powerful in a way that is unexpected. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then it almost, maybe it makes a person feel like more is possible than they thought. Yeah. And they, maybe that also helps them open up their perspective of what is possible and what can might be connected. So I think, yeah, I think definitely a long answer, but I think that Reiki can help with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think too, um, you know, it seems that there's so many people nowadays struggling with pain and um, pain management is a big thing. And, you know, um, I've seen clients shift uh, with food and, and pain completely, you know, someone who has rheumatoid arthritis, who, who is pain free now, uh, with food. And, um, and I think that the, um, the, the same thing can, the pain that, that we have can take so much of our energy. And, and if I, from, from what I can understand the, the Reiki would, alleviate the pain and make room for the mind to go in other places. Is that kind of what, how it works? I think that's one way you could put it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it also takes a lot of energy to be in pain, right? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of focus, like you say, so if the, if the pain starts to alleviate and you're, in, uh, this is something interesting, actually, I've done, uh, gone through some life coaching courses lately because when a person whose habits took them to a place like they were in pain or they had this these old stories that they were telling that were creating this pain and then you start to clear that with the energy then they're like well now what do I do because I don't have this old story to fall back on and they don't even want to fall back on it right but whether it's with food or whether it's energy stuff that's kind of cleared but it's bringing up this old stuff and it's clearing it out and then it's like what do I do now yeah. What do I, what, what there's like, it's, it's like, it opens up these options, these doors for somebody and they need, yeah. So it's like, then you need the next step of like, okay, what's a what healthy choice? focus on now? Yeah. What's yeah. a healthy choice to do for yourself? What's a way to nurture yourself? You know? Yeah. yeah. It can really open the door to, um, to self awareness and, and, and healing for sure. Absolutely. Um, because I'm so passionate about yoga, I want to I want to talk, shift gears and talk talk about about yoga, um, and um, and there's a lot of people who are doing yoga now. Uh, there's still a lot of people who have not tried yoga. And um, what what do you think are the 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 if a person is interested, um, but they haven't tried it, uh, what do you think the fears around it are? Because there's usually a reason why someone is, hasn't tried it, if they're kind of interested in it. What do you think the fears are there for people? Well, I think there's that big myth out there that, oh, I can't do yoga unless I'm flexible, <laughs> right? right? So right. I, that a, I really, I see that a lot 
uh, oh, I'm too tight. I'm too tight to go to yoga, right? Uh, and that's a huge myth because if if I if I didn't start going to yoga because of how tight I was 15 years ago before I found yoga, I would never have made it through the door, right? It's now because of yoga, the flexibility and the strength that you gain from it, right? Like it's, you come to yoga to help relieve those, the tight stuff and that, you know, the, the achy places and the things that just don't seem to move really well. I think that's, a, I think that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then also another thing is that if people are maybe working with something physical, like if having, they have a physical challenge and they're interested, they want to get moving, but they don't really know how they may not know that there are different kinds of yoga and there's something for everybody. There really is something, a kind of yoga for everybody. Um, you know, so if you're working with something physical in your body, you can take a gentle class, maybe even a chair class where you don't even get down on the floor, but you're working from a chair or standing and you can start to bring some mobility back and bring some strength back when you're, if you're recovering from something, you know, that you need to rebuild some muscle, muscle energy. I remember one of the classes that I was in in Bridgewater with you, and there was a girl there using a chair and uh, the rest of us weren't. And that, that, you know, in no time, I remember so well, uh, she had her chair and you were always making sure that, that whatever we were doing, she could do what she could at that spot that she had with the chair. And then all of a sudden she didn't need the chair anymore. And it was amazing to see that because, um, because she progressed so nicely with your help. And I, I think that that is such a great um, accomplishment for her and for you as the teacher. Um, the, the thing that, two things that I hear about, you know, working with my clients and people that I talk to because I do, I do um, yoga and, and talk about it a bit. Um, there's two things that I hear that people don't want to go to yoga and I want, I, I'll, I'll mention them and then um, maybe you can, you can uh, uh, give them a little pep talk. So there's two things. Um, I'm too fat. I'm too overweight. I can't go to yoga until I lose weight. Um, and or I have nothing to wear. Everyone that goes there is slim and perfect body. And I don't look like that. So I, even if I had the clothes, I don't look like that. So I can't, I, I'm not going to put myself in an uncomfortable situation because of those two things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, being, feeling self-conscious, I think that is something that keeps people away for whatever reason, worrying about what they look like. And, and, you know, there's, there are things you can do again, like it's, you can find maybe a group that is a, like, it's a smaller group, like specifically focused on what that aspect, if that's important to you, but it's also, I, it's so important to just start where you are. Right? Give yourself uh, compassion in this moment. Like we are here right in this moment, wherever you're at in your body. And that's where you start from. Yeah. So, you know, you can, so it, I would encourage anybody who was working, you know, with that, who's feeling like a little intimidated. What do you feel like you can do? Can you get down on the table, on the floor and, you know, on hands and knees? Do you want, do you want to start from a, a place where you just, you're working with a chair and there are classes for all those things. And mm -hmm. honestly, if you're really uncomfortable with it, you can always do a one-on-one -on -one private class and have your specific needs met, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's not only coming to a class and like, what's the teacher got in store for us today? It's geared for me, the way I work with my clients and one-on-one -on -one, like students, you know, I do, I have some one-on-one -on -one private clients who are not ready to go to a public class yet where there's other people around for whatever reason that you just, you know, they're not there yet. And they're just like, can you, can we do yoga with this focus? And so that's another great way to do it, you know, or to get a couple of your friends together and see if you can find a teacher. Like we offer that here at the studio where you can put, um, we call it like a, like a little private bubble class where you could put together a group of your friends up to six people. And if it's, especially if you're brand new for yoga, how much fun would that be to like have Alex or I teach a class that's completely focused to whatever you want it to be, right? 
So yeah. it could be really gentle or it could be a little more challenging, um, but it's, there are lots of ways to get into yoga. So it's how it's, I guess it's how badly do you want to give it a try and then trying to find a way, you know, do you want, you can work one-on-one -on -one with somebody that's for sure or in a small group yeah. or find the class that, that covers the kind of action and movement that you feel like you can handle. And you might not know until you try a class or two, but that's the great thing is you can go to one class and then say, that's not quite what I was looking for. And you can try something different. Yeah. yeah. So I like yeah. what you said about start, start where you are. And um, I've used this quote before. Um, there's a tennis player, Arthur Ashe is his name. And he has a quote, it says, he, um, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And um, you know, you will see amazing results in no time, no matter what it is you're doing. And um, I had taken one of my friends when I was still living in Qatar, one of my, I convinced one of my friends to go to yoga and she was, you know, I don't know, I don't think I can do it. I have sore knee and I can't really remember or what her, her um, physical challenges were, but um, she, uh, at the end of the class, she did an inversion and she was blown away and she was so pumped about it because she had no idea, first of all, how the class would go. I got her there and, um, and she was just so thrilled after that of what she had accomplished. It was, it surpassed her expectations. And I think that would happen with most people who have never tried it. Yeah. yeah. What, what would you say, Tracy, um, to people who who would like to try yoga, they're ready to try it. Um, they have their reasons for it. But give us your your description of the benefits of yoga. Oh my gosh, I, there's so many. There's so many. Yes. Uh, yes. Like just just trying to even keep it general to start. Like physically, you just start to feel better. I I came to yoga from a place of um, I was a competitive athlete. And I started to do yoga as a cross training and immediately just started getting stronger in my body. Mm -hmm. And then I, in my whole body. So you get stronger physically mm -hmm. uh, through your, throughout your body, uh, including your core and back, which is really important just for our day-to-day -day living. Um, emotionally, it really helped me. Has, I, I like to say that yoga has saved my life multiple times. It saved me through, it got me through a nasty divorce. It got me through breast cancer. It's gotten me through other injuries in my body um, because of the emotional support that it gives you. The, there's you know, all these aspects. You might just think of yoga as a physical practice, but there's breath work and there can be meditation, right? There's all these different components that together really are very powerful. Um, so there's a lot of emotional benefits like reducing stress, slowing your heart rate, reducing your blood pressure. And, and you can have, and, and so I like to think of yoga as like, it, it's brought into my toolbox. Like I didn't have these tools before I started coming to yoga. And then all these things that I learn, whether it's a physical movement or a breath, uh, breath work, pranayama, or a meditation, like they're all just little tools that you can access anytime. You don't even have to be on your yoga mat to be able to get the benefit of them. So yeah, there's so, yeah, so many, so many benefits. I would say if anybody, anytime I hear somebody who's thinking about it, it's like, yes, come. I had a, a brand new person come into a class Monday night. It was her second class, um, second yoga class ever, but first time with me. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I just think that if you want to do yoga and there's a particular kind of yoga that you want to do, then that's the class that you should go for. Even if you don't think you can do hardly any of it, the more you go, the more your body starts to learn, right? And then you start to get out of your head because you start to learn the movements, right? You're, at first you have to associate the pose name with the movement. What does that look like? And what does that mean? Um, but the more that you come, the more you're able to do, like it just like your edge, we talk about it, you know, it would, and you know, like you find you have an edge, we all have an edge in like where we can go into a physical pose. Mm -hmm. And it changes from day to day. Sometimes it, we can go deeper, sometimes we can't depending on where we're at on a given day. Mm -hmm. And it changes as particularly for new people who are coming into it and just, you know, committing once or twice a week, you will see your edge shift so quickly you would be amazed. You might not even recognize your own body in six months. Yeah, 
Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? And um, it's, uh, the, you know, what people don't often realize is even if you're going to a class once a week, you notice so many things. And I always say, well, two, two things, but I find that when I started doing yoga on a regular basis, um, so that was about three times a week for me, um, I felt taller. I, I walked taller automatically. And, um, and, and it was like, oh my goodness, you know? So my posture improved and, it, you know, I still, it's always, it's a work in progress, but, um, but I find that I, I feel lighter, taller. And the other thing that I have found um, is the amount of the benefit for stress reduction is, is for me has been amazing. And um, for some reason, um, and maybe you can elaborate on this, it has it for me it has shifted the way i look at things and the way i react to things and and um i find that that has been um it, it just shocking i i i don't the physical benefits are there but the emotional i wasn't expecting do you think that a lot of people don't really expect that emotional uh shift in in their body do you think that they mostly um think that it, it's all physical well, you might get that experience if you go to yoga in a gym where it is a, meant to be more of a physical practice, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like there's, there's totally different kinds of yoga, right? There are people, there are, there are teachers who teach yoga from a, from a strictly physical perspective, right? right. So it does, it does depend on where you go. Um, but for me, yeah, like right off the bat, the very first yoga class I ever went to with the intention of, you know, cross training from the sport that I was playing at the time, you know, it was, it completely changed my life. Like I didn't, I went in the door thinking it was a physical practice and immediately learned in that one practice alone that I just couldn't believe how calm I felt at the end of it. So I don't know, I think at first people don't necessarily realize that, but, and then it might even take a while, like what? happened <laughs> you know and it took me a while to figure out why why is that what's happening here you know why do i feel so much better not like you said like in the in the emotional body like the calmness mm -hmm. you know and then it becomes an addiction yeah well i think because you it took me a while to figure out that it's really at least the way that i teach like vinyasa that flowing movement of moving with your breath it just brings you into the moment right so when you're in the moment you can't worry about something that's happened in the past and you can't worry about what's going to happen later you're just right here and all that other stuff falls away and there you are right and in this moment everything's perfect because you're breathing and you're alive and they're like what what more is there <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, and I thought it took me a long time to get to the point where I actually realized that for me, that's what it was, was like when it brings you into the moment and that's just, you know, then you can't be worrying about anything else. So yeah. that's, that's, to me, that's a gift. They say that exercise is nature's antidepressant and I think yoga takes it one step further. Yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, when you think about like, um, when you do yoga, like a lot of times with different exercise, kinds of exercise programs, you're, you're just doing, you're doing a particular thing. And then, but with yoga, it's about awareness of what your, what your body's feeling in that moment. Right. So, uh, I think that's, that's that extra step that you're talking about the awareness of, oh, how do I actually feel when I'm in this pose? Like what's going on here versus thinking about what you're going to make for dinner. It's like, oh, look at that. Oh, I can really feel that in my right thigh, you know? And so it, it like, it, it starts to wake us up to the different parts of our body, which I think then translates off the mat. Um, I just find like, I don't, I think, you know, the older you get, the more uh, chances you are increased chance of like hurting yourself, like with your hurting your back with shoveling or whatever. And I just find that I don't ever have that problem because I'm just so aware Like when I use a shovel, it's like, okay, I'm going to like get in goddess pose or something. Right. And like scoop and <laughs> so engage you, your core. And, yeah. Your core and you're like, I feel like everything I do, if I'm on the mat or not, it's like, everything is yoga. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So true. My goodness. Yeah. Um, I have a question. What, um, what is one common myth about your profession 
that, or your, your, you know, yoga or Reiki that, that you would like to debunk? Is there anything that comes up for you? Well, I think the main one I already kind of did, which was that with yoga, like that you have to be flexible already to come to yoga. Right. That's Good. really the main thing with, with yoga and with Reiki. Uh, I would say, um, I, I think that like we kind of touched on this, but people come, I think some people don't, well, they don't know what Reiki is. Like, and, we, and we've talked about that, but, but the idea that it could help all these different things and all these different aspects of your being mm -hmm. and not just one, but it, they're all connected. So it's like, you start to feel, you know, the Reiki starts to improve in one area of your body and being, and then it helps other parts of your being too. So I think that there's, there might be, that that's kind of what I would want people to know about Reiki is like you can have a headache and you can come in for Reiki and it might help the headache, but it also might help you feel calmer about some situation or just more able to handle something that you maybe were kind of feeling a little overwhelmed about before. So, yeah. Wow. It, it, the power that these two practices have is, 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 um, is beyond um, what people expect. And those, of, those who do yoga and who've had Reiki sessions um, and, and maybe you know, do some self Reiki know, know the difference. Um, we, we have surpassed our, our half hour, not surprised with cha cha cha. But um, is there anything, I have a couple more things I wanna mention, but is there anything that you would like to say that that we didn't talk about today, Tracy? Well, just um, I think just uh, touching on what you're saying about kind of yoga and Reiki. Uh, I have a class that I teach called restorative Reiki yoga, and it's a it's a class once a week that I offer for those people who can't pay to come one on one for a Reiki session or one on one. They don't feel like that's in the budget maybe don't even, or just curious what even Reiki is, but if you came to my restorative class, you would get group distance Reiki in my class. And in fact, like I mentioned, it, Reiki can be done distance as well, like from far away. And all my classes are both in person and live online. So you can actually try that class or any of our classes uh, from the privacy and comfort of your own home too. So that's, it's actually my new favorite class that I just started offering in the last couple months is a restorative Reiki. So really relaxing and receiving the benefits and healing from Reiki. So, it's and I sing too. <laughs> Pardon, in a nice I thing. I a chant to people as well. So mm -hmm. I hear that's very relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Tracy has an amazing voice. <laughs> um, so um, I wanted to, I don't have your contact details written down. Can you can you tell us how to get a hold of you if we you know somebody wants a session? Um, and again, where your studio is? Sure. Um, so I have a Blockhouse Yoga and Wellness Studio. So that's blo BlockhouseYoga.com is the way to connect to both to um, me and my partner Alex, both for yoga classes, different kinds of passes that we offer, our schedules out there, as well as um, you can book in for a private session, whether it's yoga or Reiki or Pranasage. And we are located uh, on Highway 325 at the four-way stop. So I don't even know the address, <laughs> but it's at the four-way stop in Blockhouse. <laughs> So, and um, so, but my email, if you want to get in touch with me directly, Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y dot balance to bliss at gmail.com. Okay, great. Um, Tracy, we, uh, you mentioned to me uh, um, before in an email um, about a promotion you're having in February. Do you want to talk about that? Are you prepared to talk about that? I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> can mention it and not give too many details because we're still kind of working it out but basically um we're doing a promotion at the studio for the month of february which is that we will have uh we're putting together this big beautiful gift basket that we have received we've been receiving lots of donations from local businesses um in the form of items as well as gift certificates and we're going to raffle it off 
at the end of the month. And the way that people can get their name into the raffle is by coming to a class, by, like, by bringing a, a new friend to the studio, you'll get your name in the hat that way. Uh, if you come to a class and you enjoy it by putting a testimonial up on our website, uh, that's another way to get your name in the hat. So there's unlimited, there'll be like four or five different ways that you can get your name in the hat and you can do them you know, multiple times so that, um, that you can get your name into the hat for the drawing of this beautiful gift basket. We're actually really excited about it. We've been putting it together the last week or so and have been really uh, touched by the generosity of local businesses to help in, uh, in wanting to participate. And uh, so we'll be promoting all those businesses over the course of February. Uh, so you can find out who local businesses are and who, who is providing goodies into our little gift basket. Excellent, great. Well, thank you so much, Tracy, um, for joining me today and sharing your expertise on Reiki and yoga and, um, and all the things that, that, that go along with it. And congratulations again on your new studio. That's really exciting. And um, my next interview will be next week and I will be posting who I'll be interviewing and um, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining and tuning in and um, take care. Bye for now. Okay, bye. bye.